How's it going and welcome back to another video. Today I've got another ridiculous camera lens that I've mounted onto the Sony E-mount system. This here is a Pentax 110 series camera lens that is a 24 millimeter f 2.8 fixed aperture. As you can see this lens is made mostly out of shiny plastic and feels rather cheap but if you flip it over you can see that it does in fact have an aluminum mount on the back which is always a plus for any lens out there. I got this lens for $23 on eBay. I can probably be found for less than that but that was one that I could buy it now and shipping was only three bucks. I also got this this Pentax 110 to NEX adapter on Amazon for about $12 as well. So all in all I'm in this lens about $40 total. It's a pretty snazzy looking lens and it's very unique. It's going to be hard to find anybody else that's got the same setup because it's so unique and kind of hilarious looking when it's mounted on a camera. So as far as I know there's only three total lenses for the Pentax 110 system. There is the 24mm, a 50mm, and an 18mm. All of them f1.8. All of them are okay image quality. They're not that great, but they're not terrible either. So let's jump over to some image examples of what this little lens is capable of. So this is really where this lens shines, is at the close-up shots, because it can manage to get really sharp images and create a nice separation with the background with the f2.8 aperture. The background of the images can kind of have a swirl effect to them, as you can see here, and the, the center of the image is still very sharp, and I'm about four feet away from Sarge right here. So in this image here, you can see what the background looks like when the lens is focused to minimum focus. It's not the smoothest background, but it still adds for a nice effect to the background of images. Sharpness in this one here is absolutely phenomenal for a $20 lens. Let's just jump through a few more of these. Another example of the bokeh. This kind of shot is where the lens starts to deteriorate. You can really see its weaknesses here is in the bright areas there's quite a bit of fringing the infinity focus isn't as sharp as the close focus but it's not too bad either when you get up to the far corners you can really see lots of just bizarre stuff going on there's kind of like a, a crescent shape up here all throughout the entire corner close focus again fantastically sharp as good as anything else out there and the background looks nice as well. Going through just a couple more of these. Solid sharpness in the center. Weird shapes going on all over the place in the corners. This one here, I believe, really accentuated how bad it does in high contrast areas. This here, this is just absolutely terrible all throughout the trees on this tree, the buildings. This might have been slightly out of focus. I shot another one here. Not any better on the glare off the cars. Up in the corner of the tree isn't any better, but the buildings came back a little bit. Still some heavy fringing going on. And just another couple images here and there. This was at uh, ISO 2000, I think, inside nice and sharp, soft in the corners, which is to be expected. But I believe that this lens can actually cover a full frame sensor with just mild vignetting. So that's, that's something that I won't be able to test, but I have read. So it's good to know that this can be used on a full frame sensor if you want to. So overall, the image quality in this isn't the best out there. But when it comes to a 20 to $30 lens, this produces really cool images and a very novel lens to have with its size. This one here, I can't find any real good place in the picture when I zoom in. I think I missed focus slightly here, which destroyed the center of the image. And then further to the left, where it was in focus, it's messed up by the corner softness. So, you gotta be careful with the shots you take on with this lens. Here's another image here that shows just how detailed the center of these images can be. So, I'm fairly impressed with this lens. I just thought this was a cool picture. So while you can't change the aperture within the lens itself, you can get an adapter similar to this one here, but it's got an aperture inside of it. However, the things I read about that adapter is that it can throw off your infinity focus and does more harm than good, really. 
But I've also heard that this lens is incredibly sharp when you do stop it down. And there is a way to stop it down without using an adapter, I think. I'm gonna try and cut my own aperture out for this lens here. So, in order to stop it down to f3.5, what we do is we take 24 millimeters, the focal length, and divide it by 3.5, the aperture, and that gives us 6.857 millimeters. This is the reason that aperture is sometimes depicted like this right here, with the f divided by. f is the focal length divided by f5.6, f3.5, f2.8, and that gives you an actual dimension. You have the focal length, 24 millimeters, divided by the aperture, f3.5, and we end up with an aperture that's just under seven millimeters wide across the opening. So, I've got my trusty calipers here. So let's see what we can do as far as making our own aperture. I want this, I want this aperture to fit right in here in the back of the adapter. And that is 23 millimeters across. Now I'm fully aware that this material is not ideal for making apertures out of. I'd much rather go with a black construction paper or maybe even a black matte plastic. But this is all I've got right now, so that's what we're going to use. Alright, well I think that turned out a lot worse than I was expecting it to. Um, so I hope it still works. I'm not expecting stellar results, but we'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick picture without and with it, and we'll compare them side by side, see what they look like. That's pretty bad. I'm not proud of that. All right, F3.5 is the blue, F2.8 is the red. Let's see here. Center sharpness, indistinguishable. F3.5 looks a little better over here in this one. That's closer to the edges. Let's go ahead and make these a little bit bigger, see if we can't see some background blur difference. There is a difference in the depth of field. There's a lot more details in the F3.5, the F2.8, not so much. So it seems like a little aperture actually worked. Let's go over to the corner details. You gotta say the F3.5 does look like a lot, a lot sharper there. Definitely got more details. Interesting. And over here, this part looks a good bit sharper. I don't know if that's a focus thing. I didn't change the focus between the two shots. But it definitely could be a depth of field. Okay, so a reasonable improvement, but well, that little aperture seemed to work all right. I'm not gonna make a career out of building paper apertures though. So I can't really recommend that route for stopping down this lens. It was just too inconvenient, too hit or miss, too inconsistent. If you've got a better way of doing it, right now I'm filming with the little lens. So this gives you an idea of what it performs like when recording video. Right here is minimum focus. And then of course, all the way back up there. So it does all right. Hopefully this video gives you an idea of how this tiny little lens works. What it lacks in image quality, it makes up in fun to use and own. Having a little lens like this just puts a smile on your face every single time you put it on the camera because it just looks hilarious. So hopefully you guys like this video. If you did, give it a like, hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you in the next one.